Near Death in Damascus, 1883. And the New York Times was already writing his obituary, calling him one of the few great men of our time. So who was he? And what made him so great? So great that in 1846, a new settlement was named El Cader in his honor. At the time, Emir Abdul Qadir Al Jazeri had made a name for himself internationally and in the United States as a patriot and a freedom fighter. His struggle to unite disparate tribes to resist French colonization was a mere three generations after a similar American experience for the British. For the French, Abdul Qadir represented a dangerous opponent because of his unprecedented weapon, his humanitarian instincts. This, coupled with religious guidance, caused him to treat French prisoners no differently than his own men when it came to food, medical attention, and respectful behavior. Such information, the French high command did everything possible to keep suppressed. More than 20 years later, those same humanitarian instincts caused him to save thousands of Christian lives in Damascus during the Druze riots of 1860. This won him the admiration of leaders around the world, including President Abraham Lincoln, Queen Victoria, Pope Pius IX. Even his former enemy, France, awarded him the Legion of Honor, their highest recognition of valor. His behavior also won the admiration of Muslim leaders, including Imam Shamil, the famed freedom fighter of the Caucasus, and the Ottoman Sultan, Abdul Majid I. Today, his bust holds an honored place in the foyer of the International Red Cross in Geneva, alongside that of founder Henri Dunant, a Swiss businessman and a European advocate of humane treatment of prisoners. Dunant had his own humanitarian instincts reinforced visiting Algiers when he learned of the uncommonly high standards that the Emir held his men to, standards derived from a strict application of Islamic law. So who was he, this Abdul Qadir? He was a scholar, a warrior, a mystic, poet, diplomat, whose faith was drawn from the 11th century Sufi tradition, that of Abdul Qadir al-Jilani. To relate to Abdul Qadir, Americans might think of John Winthrop, the founder and governor of the Massachusetts Bay Company, who ruled by the good book. To Algerians, they have considered Abdul Qadir as their George Washington, since 1962, when they won their independence from France. For Americans, Abdul Qadir represents a story and a faith model that is badly needed today, badly needed to rebalance perceptions of Islam, a religion with over 1.7 billion adherents. And for Muslims, the Emir represents a much needed source of pride and connection to the best in their own tradition. And that is one of the reasons I wrote a book about his life and times. For Abdul Qadar, his religion was not a safety belt holding his identity together, but a platform for exploring the meaning of God's universe. His theology was simple. God is greater, greater than whatever we think God is. No one owns God. So how do Muslims today react to Abdul Qadar's Islam? Mohammed Khan Nasser, publisher of Al-Sharia Journal in Pakistan, a scholar with conservative roots, had this to say about Abdul Qadir. Abdul Qadir is not only a symbol of the Muslim concept of resistance and struggle against foreign domination, but also an embodiment of true theological, moral, and rational ideas taught by Islam. First, he is not overwhelmed by blind zeal to fight at all costs. Rather, he's capable of weighing the pros and cons and making wise decisions. Secondly, he is strictly guided in his decisions by the legal limitations and moral obligations set forth in the divine law. Thirdly, his political animosity with the French doesn't blind him to what they have in common. And finally, he can put himself in his adversary's shoes. Imagine that. He can look into the complexities of the situation and understand the different factors that compel them to follow a certain course. Abdul Qadir's lived faith inspired people of all traditions, like Cardinal Leon Etienne Duval, a champion of Algerian independence. On his deathbed in 1996, Duval predicted that Algeria would one day surprise the world. 
I think it is possible that this is actually unfolding today. As Algerians resolutely and peacefully pursue a change of government that rejects the horrors of the 1990s. Both Duval and the Emir would have agreed wholeheartedly with the Apostle Peter, who advised that faith alone is not enough. To faith, one must add virtue. To virtue, add knowledge. To knowledge, perseverance. To perseverance, self-control. And to self-control, godliness and brotherly love. Abdul Qadr, above all, placed importance on knowledge. But not merely knowledge of things, which he considered like rainwater, but a deeper knowledge of God's ways to enable us to live together in harmony. It is called the Golden Rule. It's also called Love Thy Neighbor. I'm John Kaiser for the Emir Stein Center.